10 years ago. Autumn's son sifts through the trees as Natasha follows her best friend deep into the woods. Jane, where are we going? Your mom's gonna kill us if she finds out we went this far by ourselves. I know, but you've gotta see it just a little further. Jane leads Natasha to the edge of a clearing, pointing to a crumbling stone building on the other side. Whoa, what is this place? Don't know, but watch this. Jane scoops up a pebble and tosses it at the house. It sails straight over the threshold, then stops in midair. No way. The pebble hangs in the air for a moment, then drops straight down. That's so awesome! Let me try! Natasha picks up her own pebble and chucks it into the doorway. It hits the same invisible barrier, dropping to the ground. Cool! I wonder what's inside? Inside? We can't go inside. How come? It's not like anyone lives here anymore. Look! There's holes in the roof. What if you're wrong? What if we get in trouble? What if something bad happens? Natasha looks at Jane, who stands with her hands balled tight into fists, her lower lip trembling. Hey, you got your birthday present with you? Sniffling, Jane nods, reaching under her collar to pull out an old whistle hanging from a necklace. Good. Remember what I said when I gave it to you? That, that if I ever get scared... I should blow on the whistle, and you'll come protect me. Jane raises the whistle to her lips. She blows a high trill that rises and falls as it echoes through the clearing. <laughs> You're my best friend, Jane. I'm not going to let anything bad happen to you. Glancing back at the ruins, Natasha can almost hear the stones calling, reaching for her. Her feet shuffling place, itching to close the distance. But... But if you're too scared, we, we can just go home. I'm not scared. Just promise you'll watch out for me. Promise. I'll even go first. Heart thrumming in Natasha's chest, she walks straight up to the doorway, reaching out to feel the space inside. Is something there? Does it hurt? It feels... tingly. As Natasha steps onto the threshold, the tingling spreads over her whole body, then suddenly stops. Smiling, she continues into the dark room beyond. Darkness surrounds her like fog, almost thick enough to touch. Natasha shivers, suddenly certain that something is in there with her, watching her. H hello Natasha's words echo strangely in the hollow space, and the voice that returns is not entirely her own. <laughs> Someone there? What's your name? The leaves at her feet blow aside, revealing a patch of smooth gray stone. And as Natasha watches, Redfield sounds. Old. <laughs> like a snooty old butler. Nice to meet you, Mr. Red. I'm Natasha. Natasha. Natasha's eyes slowly adjust to the dark room. Squinting, she sees what looks like stairs in the far corner, disappearing into a jagged hole in the floor. Natasha, is it safe? Who are you talking to? Hang on a sec. I think there's something... Wind suddenly howls up through the hole in the floor, knocking Natasha off her feet. Ah! The wind reverses direction, dragging Natasha towards the abyss. Suddenly a spark inside of Natasha awakens, making her be more aware of her surroundings. Huh? What in the- In one quick move, she digs her fingers into a crack in the floor, just barely resisting. Natasha? Jane, run! Through the door, Natasha sees Jane turn and try to run, but the wind howls after her, snatching her up before she makes three steps. <coughs> Once again, that same strange spark comes. In one quick move again, she's able to grab Jane's hand while also holding herself. Jane! 
Jane's necklace chain breaks with a sharp snap, and the whistle vanishes down the hole in the floor. Natasha! I... I can't hold on! You're slipping! Jane starts to cry, and suddenly Natasha's fear ignites into anger. Furious, she screams into the howling darkness. Stop it, Mr. Red! Stop it right now, or else... Or else my friends are gonna come and burn your stupid house down! And just like that... The wind dies and the house falls still. Jane, come on! Let's get out of here! My... my whistle! It's a my whistle! I know, but we gotta go before it changes its mind and takes us too. Nodding, Jane lets Natasha pull her up and the two of them sprint out the front door. At the edge of the clearing, Natasha can't resist looking back one more time. The ruins sit still and quiet, showing no signs of life. Natasha, come on! Uh, coming! Natasha turns away, hurrying after Jane. Behind her, a soft whistle rises and falls as it echoes through the clearing. Present day. All day after the pep rally, Natasha's mind races with thoughts of Dan, and Jane, and him. If Redfield really is back, then Dan is in danger, and we have to help him. Now if you'll all turn to page 102 in your textbooks. As Natasha's English teacher turns away to write on the board, she opens a group text on her phone. Before Natasha could finish her text, her phone dies. Yeah! What the hell? Natasha, nice of you to volunteer. Since you're so obviously paying attention, perhaps you'll know the answer to my question. When did the last witch trial take place in the United States? Uh... Her classmates start to snicker as Mr. Cooper stares Natasha down. <laughs> Lucas catches her eyes from a few rows up. He winks at Natasha, then opens his hand under the desk. From her angle, she can make out four digits written across his palm. 
1878? Mr. Cooper raises an eyebrow. You certainly kept us in suspense, Sasha. But you are correct. 1878. Think about that, everyone. It's not so very long ago. Just 75 years before the Crucible, which we'll be reading this semester. In literature, as in life, the past is always creeping up just behind us. And so is the end of school. Class dismissed. All around Natasha, students begin to pack up their things. Natasha makes her way toward Lucas, but Mr. Cooper beats her there. Mr. Thomas, a word. Um, yeah, sure. Out in the hall, Natasha leans against the wall near an outlet, charging her phone while she waits for Lucas. Stupid phone! I just charged you! The hallway empties as everyone heads home for the day. Gradually, Natasha becomes aware of muffled voices inside the classroom. And I know what you're doing. Don't know what you're talking about. May have everyone else fooled, but you can't fool me. What's going on in there? No. Lucas probably wouldn't want me to hear this. Natasha stoops down to grab her things and move away from the door. But suddenly her instincts awaken. Natasha tries to move fast, but the cold hands still grab her from behind, covering her eyes. There you are! <gasps> Panic floods her body and she struggles wildly against her captor as she's dragged down the hall. No! Let me go! Let! Natasha's shouts turn into a gasp of pain as she's shoved backward into a wall. She hears a deafening slam and then muffled laughter. Oh my god, you face! School's back in session, Natasha! Let me out, you freaks! Oh, but we wanted to make sure your school ears started with the bang! Jocelyn kicks the locker door, making Natasha yelp and cover her ears. Get comfy in there, Natasha! We'll check on you tomorrow morning! Bye! Jocelyn and Cody's laughter recedes down the hall, leaving Natasha alone in the dark, cramped space. After a few minutes of pushing, punching, and swearing, the locker door still won't budge. Natasha slumps against the back wall, defeated. Great. Perfect. Natasha. What now? You guys think of some more fun ways to torture me? Lost, Cody? I'm not scared of you! Bang! The whole locker shakes, and the shadows all around Natasha seem to thicken, growing colder, closing in. N not scared. I'm not scared. I'm not scared! I'm not scared. Natasha spins around to find Jane staring up at her, her hands balled into fists. Behind her, the ruins loom against a backdrop of twisted trees. Jane? Jane, we have to leave! Natasha tries to reach for her, but her body stays frozen in place. Night creeps over the woods as she struggles against her invisible prison. Jane watches Natasha with huge, sad eyes as darkness bleeds from the doors and windows of the stone house, shadowy tendrils reaching out for her. Just promise to watch out for me. Jane, I... I didn't know what would happen. The darkness finally grabs hold of Jane, snatching her back toward the ruins. <coughs> Jane screams as the darkness swallows her, and then the shadows explode outward, a black hurricane howling toward Natasha. The locker door springs open and Natasha falls on top of someone, gasping frantically for air. Slowly she looks up at the person, and she realizes it's... Lucas. Thank you. Of course. Easy now. The two lock eyes, and Natasha finds herself feeling her face growing hot. <laughs> um, so, how did you get the door open? <laughs> well, I know a secret to open them. I've been telling the school for years that we need to replace these old lockers. Guess it's a good thing they never took my advice, huh? Yeah, lucky me. The two stare and then look away. Natasha can't help but notice he's smiling. 
Suddenly, a sound of alarm from his watch snaps him back, and he heaves a weary sigh. Um, late to something? <sighs> Just a lot to do, as always. Do you want to report this incident? I can take you by the office if you like. I doubt it do any good. But there's actually something else I need to talk to you about. Oh, can we walk and talk? I've got some things to take care of before I head out. Natasha nods and the two of them set off at a brisk pace. It's about what happened at the pep rally. Oh, the blackout? Don't worry, I've already filed the maintenance report. Can't have the lights going out during the basketball game. And a voice? The... <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. But... <laughs> Sorry, one sec. Before Natasha can say another word, Lucas ducks into the auditorium. Inside, Lucas waves to a group of bang kids on stage. Sounding great, guys. Just make sure you're done in here by a quarter to four, okay? The drama club needs time to set up. Lucas, listen to me! Mr. Red is back! Mr. Red? <laughs> what, from when we were kids? Natasha, it's okay, you don't need to be afraid. That was just some make-believe game we made up. Are you sure about that? Lucas looks rattled, even more so when the phone in his pocket starts buzzing. <sighs> Sorry again, I am. Uh, I have to answer this. Excuse me. He slips around Natasha and out a side door. By the time Natasha catches up, he's already in the middle of a phone call. Yes, Mother, I know college prep is tonight, but we talked about this. Because I have to meet with the homecoming and yearbook committees after school, I can't be in three places at once. I know, Mother. I know. Yeah. Love you too. Bye. Jeez. You really are busy. You know, if you slow down for a second... Pretty sure the school would literally collapse. Lucas's phone buzzes again. He checks it and sighs. Great. Now the school paper says they need an interview. Tomorrow? Lucas's words come faster and faster, growing louder as he starts to pace back and forth. How am I supposed to get ready for an interview by tomorrow? I can't handle this right now! Whoa! Lucas! Stop and breathe for a second! Natasha puts her hand on Lucas's shoulder, meeting his eyes. Just focus on me, okay? Deep breath in. Natasha takes a long, slow breath, motioning for Lucas to do the same. Good. Now, back out. Nice and slow. Natasha and Lucas take a few more breaths. Finally, he smiles at her. Better? Yeah, a little. Good. Now, about this interview. Maybe it'd be less stressful if I helped you prepare? I could grab a coffee down the street, and I could throw you some softball questions. I'd be meaning to catch up with you anyway. It's a perfect excuse for me to ask all kinds of nosy stuff. That would be great! You'd really do that? Sure, but you have to promise to hear me out for five minutes when we're done. Deal. Soon they're sipping warm coffee at the cozy cafe down the road. Natasha puts on her best ace reporter voice and mimics writing in a notebook. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Natasha Ayala with the Westchester Word. Thanks for sitting down with me. And can I just say, sir, what an honor it is to interview the class president, Thomas. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, my pleasure. I'm a big fan of your work, <laughs> I guess. Uh-huh, thanks. Let's start with an easy question to help our readers get to know you better. Tell us about your aspirations. I understand you're looking at colleges right now. What do you plan to major in? Well, my mom wants me to become a doctor, like her, and my dad wants me to become a psychologist, like him. And what do you want? Honestly, I want to go into politics. Oh, should I get ready to vote for Senator Lucas Thomas? God, no. This is going to sound super nerdy, but I want to work more in the background, like writing legislation and stuff. Specifically, I'm interested in how public policy can help protect the watersheds and national parks from natural gas drilling. Wow, that is super nerdy. 
but good answer. Thanks. Moving right along, let's talk about the school year ahead. What are you looking forward to most? Oh, good question. I'd say this year what I'm most looking forward to is homecoming. Really? That's surprising. This is the first year the student council has an actual budget, so we can afford to hire a decent DJ. Wow, so a school dance is actually going to be cool for once? That's the hope. Well, since we're on the subject, let's talk about the event on everyone's mind. How is planning going? Thankfully, I have no idea. Aren't you on the homecoming committee? Yeah, but once the actual planning starts, the cheerleaders tend to take over, which I am a-okay with. Natasha clicks her imaginary pen and closes her imaginary notebook. Well, I think that's just about everything I need for the interview. Look for it on the stands tomorrow. Ha. Huh. But seriously, thanks Natasha. That helps a lot. Anytime, Lucas. I'm really glad I could help. Now... There's something else I need to talk to you about. Oh, you mean what happened at the pep rally? Yeah, so you heard him then? The whispers? The voice? Lucas scratches his arm uncomfortably, glancing around. I mean, look, I don't need it getting around that the class president hears voices, but hypothetically, suppose I did. What then? Well, hypothetically, a bunch of us are meeting by the fountain to talk about it at six. So, you in? Or are you too busy? I'm in. I owe you at least that much for helping me with the interview. Great. See you then? Yeah. See you then. After a few hours, the sun sinks behind the trees as Natasha walks out of the school building. She finds Noah, Lily, and Lucas already waiting in silence. Andy arrives a minute later, with Stacy trailing behind, texting busily. Hey guys, one sec. Jeez, how's it this dark already? Noah stands up from his seat on the fountain. Lily moves to stand beside Natasha, her hands twisting nervously together. Who are we missing? Um, I don't see Ava. Ava speaks suddenly from behind Natasha, making Lily jump. You guys look like the cover of a Christian rock album. Jeez! What are you, a ninja? Vampire. But I've seen you out in the sun. I am the daywalker. Fear me. <clears throat> okay, look. We all know why we're here. The black cow at the pep rally. The wind. The voice. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Stacy. I saw your face at the rally. I saw all of your faces. And you were all just as freaked out as I was. Because you all heard the same thing I did. Everyone plays together. A long, heavy pause fills the air as everyone refuses to look at each other. There's... there's something else. Lily holds out her phone in shaking hands. Lily, are these texts from... Dan? Wait, you got them too? Hold up. Did we all get weird-ass texts from Dan last night? Natasha's fingers move toward the bruises on her neck, which begin to ache at her touch. Guys, I have to tell you something. Natasha summons her courage and tells them everything that happened to her last night. The texts. The blackout. I know it sounds crazy, but... I think it was him. I think Mr. Red is back. We have to call the cops. Right now! They'll find that sickle that attacked you and... Andy, there's no point. There's no way the police would believe us. You don't know that. Ava, would your dad, who is a cop, believe you if he said a nightmare monster was coming to kill us? Hell no. He'd make me pee in a cup and then search my room for drugs. Besides, what are cops gonna do against Redfield? Arrest him? Yeah, alright. I get it. <laughs> Maybe get the dirt monster to testify? I said I get it. Noah, leave her alone. Him. Huh? Him? You said her. Oh. Oh, jeez, I'm sorry, Andy. It's fine. 
Andy shrugs, crossing his arms. He aims a sharp kick at a pebble, sending it flying across the street. Guys, Dan could be in trouble. We have to go find him. Natasha, come on. He needs actual help from, like, adults and professionals. Professional adults. No, it has to be us. And why is that, precisely? Because we know who took him. Right! His imaginary friend from when he was, like, eight years old. Mr. Red wasn't just Dan's friend. And you know damn well he wasn't imaginary. I know nobody wants to dredge this stuff back up, but it happened. We all remember Mr. Red, and we all saw what he did to Jane. We can't let him do the same thing to Dan. No one did anything to Jane, Natasha. It was just a freak accident. That's bullshit and you know it. All I know is is that we were a bunch of dumb kids who shouldn't have been playing out in the woods by ourselves. Look, let's just all calm down for a second and consider the facts. Everything that happened at the rally could be explained by some faulty wiring. As for Dan, what exactly are you proposing we do? Isn't it obvious? We have to stop this. We have to go find Dan and figure out what he did so we can undo it. We have to go... into the woods? The wind picks up. Leaves flee across the asphalt as Lily backs away, shaking her head. No, 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 no. I am not going back there. Noah moves toward Lily, holding up his hand in a calming gesture. Lily, I know you're scared, but if we want this to stop, we have to... Andy blocks Noah's path, placing a gentle but firm hand on his chest. Back off, man. Lily doesn't have to do anything she doesn't want to. Are you serious right now? Somewhere, a heavy door slams open. As one, the group tenses like animals caught in a predator's stare. Three cheerleaders round the corner of the gym, chatting happily as they pass. They vanish into the school, and they start to breathe again. Noah, maybe you have time to go running around the woods chasing boogeymen? But some of us have real problems. Getting kidnapped by some shadow monster nightmare dude seems like a pretty real problem. I'm sorry, I can't get involved with this. Why? Because it might mess up your standing with the popular kids? No, because if Dan's been kidnapped by some crazy guy, a bunch more of us stumbling around the woods doesn't help. Then we should stay far, far away from it. So you're just going to close your eyes and pretend nothing's happening? Just like you did when my sister died? Noah! No, I've had enough of this. Redfield killed Jane right in front of us, and you all shrugged it off like nothing happened. Hey! No one shrugged off anything! The hell you didn't! Class president, cheerleader, basketball jock. You all seem to be doing just fine. The second Jane was in the ground, you were all happy to move on with your lives. And you're pulling the same stunt with Dan. Oh, now you care about Dan? Where have you been for the past year? Where were you when Dan got totally wasted at Winter Formal? Where were you when he was having breakdowns after every football game? Where the hell were you, Noah? Where are any of you? I didn't know Dan was having that much trouble. Why didn't he say anything? Because apparently, when you're a big football star, you're not allowed to have feelings. But we could have helped. <sighs> I could have helped. Well, now it's too late. Stacy turns away and storms off without another word. Lily looks down at the ground, holding her textbooks in a shaking, white-knuckled grip. Lily... I... I'm sorry, but I, I can't go back there. I, I just can't. Lily turns, hurrying back toward the school. Noah turns to Lucas with an accusing frown. I guess you're gonna bail too, Captain America? Look, even if I did believe all of this, I just don't have the time. I'm sorry. Lucas turns and heads back toward the school. Fine. Just bear your heads up your asses. This isn't just gonna stop, you know. Noah, leave them alone. If I hadn't seen that thing last night, I probably be in denial too. I don't know about this ghost crap, but Dan's a good guy. And he needs us. So, when are we going? Friday? What? No! We have to go tonight! Ugh, I can't. My dad's got this really strict school night curfew and wow, does this sound lame out loud. <laughs> yeah, I can't go tonight either. The team needs me here early tomorrow for training. Sure they do. 
How would the team dude bro know they're having fun without some minorities around to exclude? Andy stiffens, ready to snap at Ava, then wilts grumbling. <sighs> I mean, you're not wrong. But I have to keep showing up, right? They can't ignore me forever. I admire your optimism. So that's it? You're both sure you can't come? Andy and Ava look at each other doubtfully. No way. We're all going. Ava, what if we tell your dad you were studying at my house? Huh. That might actually do it. He always liked you, and he'll be thrilled to hear I'm making normal friends. Natasha turns to Andy. Andy, I know basketball is important to you, but this could be life or death. You're the strongest person here, and I feel a lot better with you looking out for us. Well, when you put it that way, all right, I'm in. Noah? Yeah, I'm in. All right then. I gotta go in and grab my stuff. So you go on ahead. We'll meet up in front of the hardware store. Alright, then what? Dan? We go save Dan!